Hey guys and welcome back to Mina Wonder. So this is going to be the first book haul in a really long time or at least what feels like a really long time. It's so crazy that it's June now. Um, I just realized that the last book haul that I did was way back in January and there were some books then also that I forgot to haul so I'll be including them today. Lately, I really haven't been buying a lot of books just because number one, I've had survival on the mind and seeing this pandemic thing as something that will unfold long term and you know, just kind of putting money aside. I feel like if I let myself, I probably spend all of my money on books. There were some books that I bought back in January that I will be including today. But most of these were really just bought um, once the bookstores opened here in Manila. So right now, Fully Booked and National Bookstore are open. So I don't know, there was like this newfound excitement for me. <laughs> like, I think it's one thing to tell yourself that like you're not gonna buy books, but a completely other thing to literally know that you can't buy books. <sighs> Coffee. The first book that I want to talk about today is The Blindfold by Siri Hustev. So I'm a huge fan of Siri Hustev and I feel like I've talked about her a lot on this channel. The thing about Siri Hustev's work is that I encountered her young enough in my life, um, probably when I was around 16, 17, um, so that she's kind of become like one of those writers whose work fundamentally influences the way that I see things like literature and art. So when I saw this in the bookstore, I just knew that I had to get it. It's her first ever novel that she published. Initially, I kind of had my hesitation about buying this just because um, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy it as much as I enjoyed um, her more recent novels. And of all of her novels, actually, her oldest one, The Enchantment of Lily Dahl, is the one that I disliked the most but that's not to say that I really disliked it it's just that it wasn't my favorite but then in the end I decided to get it anyway because it has this super amazing awesome blurb by David Foster Wallace and I love me some DFW so yeah um, I'm very excited to sort of see what this world will look like especially since I've already read most of her more recent work Next, um, I also decided to get a copy of Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. So kind of a funny story is that um, the way that I read or like discovered this book is that my friend Astir gave me an ebook copy of it. So I've already kind of been introduced to the world of Bluettes, like I sort of know what to expect. I think I read up until like 20-ish pages like into it. So yeah, so I kind of know what to expect. Basically, these are some very, very short lyrical essays um, that all fixate on the color blue. So the topics of all of these very poetic kind of CNF bits are all to do with blue things. So like blue vases, um, like blue stones, the sky, stuff like that. And I really like projects that do that. Um, I'd say that this is very similar in ethos to The White Book by Han Kang. Although I think Han Kang's work, um, while it does sort of talk about white things and fixates on the color white, um, I feel like Han Kang's is a little bit more sparse in language, whereas I think um, Maggie Nelson kind of uses her, her power of like uh, twisting images and sounds a little bit more. And that's fine because I feel like when you're dealing with a form like this very, very short lyrical essay, you can kind of approach it from two sides. So I'd say that the Han Kang book kind of approaches it more from the fiction side and Maggie Nelson kind of approaches it more from the poetry side. So <laughs> even if this book is not new to me, this book is new and I do appreciate reading something like this um, with a physical copy because I am very much the kind of person who likes to write on my books. So yeah, I'm very excited to have this in my collection. Up next is kind of an impulse buy, I guess. Um, I keep saying that I should stop impulse buying books, but, but you know, literally I think my biggest fear is to run out of things to read. So yeah, so I bought My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. The reason I bought this actually is that, um, of course, I've heard of Elena Ferrante before. I think there was sort of um, a phase in YouTube where everyone was reading Elena Ferrante. But yesterday, um, I saw her book of essays in Fully Booked and I really wanted to buy it. But <laughs> when I was reading those essays, they would refer back to my brilliant friend and to her other books. So I decided not to pick that up just because I hadn't read any of her work. And 
I didn't want it to be the kind of thing where I enjoy the essay but I don't really understand what the essay is pointing to. So yeah, so I decided not to pick that up. And today, um, I went out to do the groceries and when I went to National, it was like destiny. I looked at the shelf and all of the Elena Ferrante books were there. So I decided to get this one um, sort of as a jumping off point and yeah, and I hope I like it. Up next is The Water Dancer by Tenehisi Coates. So I've heard a lot about Tenehisi Coates. Um, I attended this forum last month. Oh my god, it's crazy to think that that was already last month. I feel like it was just yesterday. But um, I attended this forum on Asian writers and the Cold War. One of the people who was mentioned primarily in that forum by the speaker was Tenehisi Coates. And the particular topic that we were talking about was how a lot of writing right now kind of lacks um, that political edge just because we have been trained by literary institutions to focus on things that are more personal. And with that, there's kind of this ethos that I find myself also struggling with, where it's like, we have to write a story that's engaging and it can't be too didactic, it can't be too kind of in your face or on the nose and we still want to prioritize craft. But right now, we also have sort of this writerly duty, I'd say, to kind of reach out and to tell people that there are these problems and there are these things that need to be engaged with. And the speaker of that forum mentioned Tanahisi Coates as the one writer he can see right now who's really towing that line very well. I was very interested in seeing how, how he did that. Another book that sort of focuses on migration and travel and sort of dealing with your lineage and um, I guess like the diasporic elements of life or of creating a life for your family. I also picked up The Veins of the Ocean by Patricia Engel. So I don't really know a lot about this book, um, but the thing that sort of had me sold on this is that there was a blurb by Roxane Gay. And I've listened to a couple of episodes of Roxane Gay's podcast with Rookie Magazine. So I'm not sure if you guys remember Rookie Magazine, but it was a real big thing for people my age. Um, it was founded by Tavi Gevinson, and it was just a really nice, comforting place on the internet for kind of awkward, artsy, artsy fartsy girls, I think, to, you know, to explore photographs and essays and fiction and poetry and podcasts and ideas about other girls, other women who are also kind of struggling and dealing with the same ideas, the same things. So yeah, Tavi had a couple of episodes with Roxane Gay. And she seemed like a really cool person. So when I saw that blurb, I was like, I need to pick this up right now. And also I bought this secondhand, by the way, on Instagram. This is one of those books that I mentioned that I bought way back in January, but I just wasn't able to haul yet. And last but not the least is not really a book. It's a magazine. Um, this is the January slash December issue of Believer magazine. And it was super random that I saw this in the bookstore yesterday. I was with my friend Austere and he was like, hey, look at this. And I was like, oh my God, it's Believer. And I used to read Believer mag a lot when I was in college because back then I was very obsessed kind of with the West Coast publishing scene. I was very into like McSweeney's, Tin House. So yeah. Um, it was very good to see that there and I picked it up and a lot of the topics just really like wow like there's something that I used to read back in college and now they're talking about things that are relevant and that I can appreciate a bit more from like this more adult point of view. I was also thinking of talking a bit more about literary journals and literary magazines on this channel. Um, exactly how? I'm not yet sure but, but yeah um, please tell me if that's something that you'd be interested in because I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about it. And that's it for this haul. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you guys are staying safe and doing well. If there are any videos or books that you'd want to recommend or if you've read any of these books, please let me know in the description box below. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!